ओम ज्ञान तिवृंद से ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मिल तस्म श्री गुरव नम वंदेह श्री गुरोपदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवाश्च श्री सृजात सहगण रघुनाथ सजीव साध्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरत्षे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतारम भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति कृष्णचैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद से अन्वयादित चार्थे सुभिज्ञस्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवये मुयंतूर तेज वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यसर्गो मृषा धाम स्वयं सदा निरस्तकुहक सत्यम परम धीमह नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवतम फोर्थ कैंटो चैप्टर नंबर नाइनटीन वर्स नंबर थर्टी नाइन सो वी हैव बीन रीडिंग द स्टोरी ऑफ पृथ्वी महाराज एंड हिज ग्रेट संकल्प टू डू हंड्रेड फॉर सेक्रीफाइसिस वी रेन हाउ इंद्रा बिकेम वेरी जेलस ऑफ हिम and created obstacles by stealing the horse so much that lord brahma has to come and intervene because he was very adamant obstinate and did not want to give up and when brahma he instructed prithu maharaj that he should stop this and uh, this is leading to disturbance in the society and many people are becoming attracted by the wrong path followed by indra and here it is described that he just came and stole the horse but maybe he was doing much more than that as here it looks like only atri was seeing that and no one else but if people were becoming influenced that means He was probably going around and propagating it, getting some followers, and then he's speaking against the sacrifice that Buddha was doing. You can say that people who were gyan durbala, who were weak in their thinking, their knowledge, their discrimination, they became influenced by him. So there must be some more details, although not given here. When he was giving lectures, he said that I am a Sanjita Bhantia Peshwari Social Worker, so I will speak some attractive words. This Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Pushpita Vacha. 
people become very much attracted by the flowery language of the Vedas. So very many people were attracted to Hindu's speaking language. So Prithu Maharaj he listened to him. And this Maitreya says here that Ittam Salok Guruna Samadhishto Visham Patihi Tatha Chakritva Vatsalyam Mahona Pecha Sandade. So one Lok Guru, the teacher of the whole universe, Brahma, he instructed like this. Then the greatly powerful king Prithu, he gave up the idea of doing the sacrifice. And he also made peace with Indra, <coughs> having great affection towards him. So Prithu Maharaj was not adamant that he is not going to listen and he will continue. He followed the good advice of Brahma. And he also gave up any ill feelings towards Indra and made truce with him, Samradhi. So there's a commentary by Sri Vishnu. Chayavartha yatha brahmana agya tathayu vatsalyam kritva. So as Brahma had ordered him, instructed him, then he also showed affection towards Indra in a similar manner. Yagyasya vayo vridhatva api devindratva api cha brahmana eva agyaya tatra kritva vatsalya sachatrayur vishuddha sattvena tullyatva api kritvar bhakti utkarsena abhyartya pukam alakshya eva kritvaiti geyam So although Indra is senior to Prithu Maharaj. Senior in age, because Prithu Maharaj was born recently, Indra is there for a long time. So, Vayavridhatvati and Devendratvati. And he is the king of the Devas, the gods. Brahmanaeva Agya Tatra Prithu also. Still, he did this only because of the order of Brahma. So that means, really speaking, Prithu listened to Brahma, not that he considered that Indra is senior or Indra is great and therefore I should go on to him. Tatra Prithor Vatsalyam and he was having affection towards him. Tayor Vishuddha Sattvena Tullyatrayabhi. He says that as far as Vishuddha Sattva is concerned, both are equal because both are avatars of God. But Prithu is superior in Bhakti. Prithu or Bhakti Utkarsena Abhya Harti Tattva Malakshaya Prithu. So he is actually more respectable. Therefore he behaved as if he is senior because Vatsalya is of a senior person towards junior like affectionate feeling. So although Indra is senior in age, senior in post, but it is Prithu acted <coughs> as if he is a senior person by following the order of Brahma and treated Indra as like a junior. And it's like sometimes senior people, they may give up some act or do sacrifice for the pleasure of some junior. So that's how he did this. And he made true swimming. Pritav Bhrita Snanaya Prithave Bhuri Karmane Varanda Duste Varada Yetad Varhi Shitar Pitaha so, the custom is that when a sacrifice is completed, then the host who does the sacrifice is given a bath in the 
water from the sacrifice, and the mantra and so on, and the sanctified water. So then it is considered that yoga is complete. So he, that is called avadhrita sthana, snan. So he was given this bath, who has performed this great act. And then all the people who had assembled there, all the various gods and also come who were satisfied, they all gave their blessings and boons to Prithu Maharaj. <coughs> because they were very satisfied by the Yajna. Vipraha Satyasu Shastushtaha Shraddhaya Labdha Dakshinaha Ashishoyi Jhukchatta Radhi Rajaya Satkritaha and all the brahmanas, the priests who had assembled there, they were given various charities, Dakshina by Prithu Mahalas, with Shraddha. And when they got the Dakshina, the charity, then they were very satisfied and they gave their blessings. King Prithu, who is called here as Adiraj or the First king. Toya huta mahabaho sarveva samagataha ujita dana mana bhyam putri deva shimana vaha. And they said that, O oh, great king, that all these forefathers, devas, sages, human beings who had come there, they are all very satisfied by the charity and the respect which you have given. So in this way his sacrifice came to an end and everybody was happy and this is the end of chapter 19. So then chapter 20 now it describes how the Lord personally became manifest. Matre Uvacha Bhagavan api vaikuntha sakam magvata vibhu yagya yagya patis tushto yagya kuptam bhasata. So, Lord, He also came there along with Indra. After Indra after Prithu has stopped the sacrifice, then he was very pleased and satisfied with this. And then he spoke as follows to the Lord. So this is one very specific, specific characteristic of Indian scriptures that God personally becomes manifest here and speaks. Even in the other scriptures you don't see that. So he was personally seen there, standing in front of everybody and talking to them. Sri Vishnu Chakrati, he summarizes the chapter in one verse. He says, Vinshe Pritim Sahindrana Vishnu Na Bodhita Prithuhu Chakara Tushtava Chartam Sardhatva Gana Varam Prabhu. So, he, Lord, when he was instructed by Vishnu, then he, Brahma, and he stopped, then Lord was pleased and he personally appeared and spoke to Prithu Maharaj with great affection. And he came in all, along with Indra. And then Prithu Maharaj, he glorified the Lord. And then Lord gave him a boon. And left. So that's what is being described here. The dialogue between Lord and Prithu in this chapter basically. Tatasya Bhagavanapi Pradur Bhuya Swansha Mindram Upaniya Sandhim Karim Pradhum Prithum Prabodhyama Sahityaya Bhagavan. So first Brahma was there. And now Lord personally appeared 
and he came along with Indra, who is his own manifestation, also. And then he also made a truce between Prithvi and Indra. First, Brahma, he instructed, and <coughs> Prithu Maharaj, he listened to that. But Indra was not physically present at that time. He said, "Okay, I okay, accept." But now Indra personally came, and then Lord speaks to him. Sri Bhagwan was the Lord said, "Eshate karshid bhangam, I made the satasya." Samapayate Atmanam Ramushya Kshantu Marhasi So Lord said that here is Indra who has created a disturbance in your resolve to complete hundred or sacrifices. And now he is asking for forgiveness. So you please forgive me. So forgiving means when a person has the ability to retaliate, but he does not retaliate. Then it is called forgiving. Means he has the power to give punishment, but he does not do that. When he has power to fight back or take some action, he does not take that. Means he tolerates the wrong done by some other person. So that is the meaning of Shama. So usually we ask for forgiveness to somebody who is superior, senior, more powerful than us. So he says that Atmanam Tvam Shamam Karyato Anusha. So he says that he is asking. So Indra was actually <coughs> not saying anything. It is amazing that Supreme Lord is speaking on behalf of Indra. It's not only that he came and he brought him, but he is speaking. He is becoming the advocate for Indra. I'm saying that he is asking for forgiveness, we forgive him. And Indra has not said anything. So of course Prithu did that. Then he continues, he says, Sudhiya sadhu oloke naradeva narottamaha nabhidrayanti bhute bhyo yarhi natma kalevalam. So he speaks a general principle now. He says that those who are intelligent people, who are holy or saintly, pious, and who are the best of human beings, they do not envy any living being. Nāvidhuriyanti bhūtadhyam yarhi nātma kalayana Because they understand that this body is not the self. All these problems come because we identify with the body. And in the Yoga Sutra, Avidya, Asmata, Rāda, Dvesha, Avinyasa. So first is the Avidya. Ignorance about the self. And then there is Asmita. I'm sitting in this body and the self. And then Rāga and Dvesha come. As soon as we identify with the body, immediately there is a rag and there is a dash because certain things the body likes and certain things it does not like. Too hot, too cold, it does not like. Certain tastes it does not like. Certain behaviors it does not like. So this is all because of the body because soul is not affected by any of these things. And our identity is the soul. So when we identify with the body, then we are looking for rage, 
you become disturbed by the criticism. Somebody glorifies, says some good word, then you are very happy. But all this praise, all this criticism is only for the body. It's not for the soul, which is our true self. So then why we become influenced? Because we identify with the body. So he says, then who is a sadhu, who is intelligent? Intelligent is one who is not identifying with the body. Intelligent does not mean who is a great scientist, can solve some mathematical problems or anything like that. The sign of intelligence is knowing the distance between body and the soul. That is the sign of intelligence. If that is not there, then we are all in the same boat of ignorance, avidya. We are all influenced by avidya. Then within the realm of avidya, some people may be more intelligent, some less intelligent. But it is all part of avidya, ignorance. So real intelligence is this discrimination, this vivek. So that is called Sudhi. That is called a Sadhu. That is called a real human being. So such people they do not envy everybody. <coughs> they don't become jealous. I was reading the story about this great poet Jadev. He wrote Geet Govinda, the famous poem about Krishna. It's very wonderful. Jadev was a very saintly person. And one day he was invited by some householders and Vyasta for lunch. So he went there, he fed him, and then in India it is custom that when you invite somebody at your house for food, then after eating you give Dakshina. So Dakshina is the way of saying thank you, that you came at my house and you ate. So this is, you have done a favor to me. Usually we will think that we are doing a favor to somebody by giving food. But in Indian culture, it was that someone came and ate at your house, then it is as if the person who is eating is doing favor to you. So to do, because he has done a favor to you, then to say thank you, you give him some donation also after eating. That's called Dakshina. So he gave him Dakshina and Jade was saying that, no, please don't do that, I don't need him. If I have money, then I will be in trouble. Because in the olden days there were no banks. And if you kept money with you, then some thieves and acquires, they will trouble you. People usually used to bury the money in the ground. So what the host, he has to give him something. The custom. So he tied few gold coins to his cloth, his charm. So he was walking. When he was walking, then there were four rogues. They saw it. So they started walking with him. And Jadev, because he was a great person, so he could read their mind that these people are after my money and they are going to trouble me. So he thought that better I dispose it off. So he himself said that I have some money and I want to give it to you. So you please take it. It's like Sanatana Goswami's story when he came from Bangalore. So he gave those coins to them. But now these four people, they were 
walking and they thought that this man can be this man can be dangerous to us because he has given the money but then when he reaches his destination he can complain to the king or report to the police and then we will be in trouble so they thought that let's kill him so they were discussing what is to be done so some were saying that we should kill him somebody was saying come on why you want to kill the fellow he gave him money and some said that just cut his hands and leg and throw him in the well don't kill because killing brahmana is more sinful than brahmahatya so they cut his hands and leg and threw him in a well fortunately the well was not having water it was a blind well so he was lying inside the well and he was chanting krishna's name loudly he was devout of krishna He wrote this beautiful poem about Krishna. So it so happened that king was passing by Lakshman Singh, and when the king was going, he heard this someone chanting Krishna's name. So he asked his servant to go and see who is this person. So they found that some man is lying inside. Something. So they reported the king. So the king said, "Let him out from the well." So they brought him out, and they saw that he was all full of blood. His hands were chopped off and his legs. So the king took him to his palace, and if he wanted, he could have complained, but he did not complain to him. complain to the king so the king was taking care of him <coughs> and he was very happy because jadai was a very great poet and great learned person so king was very very happy to have him and then he asked that what more can i do for you he was already serving him So he said that you should always feed the saintly people. So always invite saintly people and feed them. So the king started doing that. He started inviting saintly people, brahmins, and feeding them. So these four crooks also came to know about it. That king is very generous for the saintly people. So then, as we've been reading about Indra, they dressed up as sadhus, and they said, "Let's also go. We'll feast, and we'll get some dakshina also, some dhanasa." So they also came, and when they came, then Jayadev, this poet, he saw them, and he recognized them. So he thought that. these people are not sadhus and if they sit down with the sadhus and the sadhus may start talking to them and asking something they will not be able to answer properly they will get caught if they get caught then king will punish them so he did not want that so what he did that he said that he told the king that you please make special arrangement for these four people they should not eat with the other sadhus you take them to your palace and feed them there and you actually host them for few days nicely there good sadhus so on the request of him he took them to the palace and these guys they got very scared We thought that now we are caught, and therefore we are being taken. But actually, they were treated even better than the others. And they were given place for residence, but they were always worried that it's just like in India, 
in some places they sacrifice goats for this kali and before the sacrifice they will give bath to the goat they put garland they give him nice food to eat <laughs> and then sacrifice it <coughs> So they thought that that's what is going to happen to us. We are being we are being given nice food and then we will be hanged. So they were very worried, but nothing happened. You know, second day, third day, fourth day, and then the other said that no, you know, you you can let them go. So these people they left. and he also said that the king you know when some great person is going he sent some of his servants with him that he should accompany them for some distance so when they were going like that then these four people you can imagine how crooked they were that they thought that this jade is dangerous we have to do something so when they were going this man started asking that how do you know this poet here who is living in the thing so he said that actually the thing is like this that previously we four and he we were together with another king we were like the royal guests for him and this jade he stole from there and because of that the king cut his hands and like did not kill him he is not telling us and that's how he, your king found him in the well you know his story so their idea was that somehow this jade should be finished then he will remain free otherwise any time he can speak against us so it is said that when these four people said like this then there was a lightning which fell on them and they were killed so this servant of the king was very surprised to see this man he was also confused that jade is like this so he came and he reported everything to the king and of course king was also intrigued and did not understand he obviously did not believe so he went to jadev and he said that what is the meaning of this whole incident and why did you say that these four people were like special and yet they got killed by the lightning so then since now they were dead then jadev gave the whole story that actually this is what happened and i did not want that these four people are put into trouble because of me or the they trouble me so when he spoke the story then to send that his hands and leg they again grew up he got his hands and legs back So I the point which is made here is that the verse which says that Nabi Druyanti Bhute Bhana, the sadhus, the saintly people, they do not envy anybody. And the reason is that Natma Kalevaram, they don't identify with the Lord. Yarhi yatah Kalevaram Atma na bhavati. अतस्तत्र अभिमानी नो आचित्यात कुतो भूत द्रोण समझे सो बिकॉज दे अंडरस्टैंड दैट बॉडी इज नॉट द सेल्फ एंड देर फॉर दे डू नॉट हैव एनी अटैचमेंट टू दिस और प्राइड इन द बॉडी एंड देर फॉर देर इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ कैन वी मैन बिकॉज वॉट इज द पॉइंट पुषा यदि मोहयती तादृशा देव मयया श्रम पर दीर्घया वृद्धसेया 
So he says that if people like you become bewildered by the Maya, illusion power of the Lord, then all the service which we have done for the seniors, for the teachers, for the parents, for a long time, it becomes useless, fruitless. In other words, if we do service to Guru, service to teachers, service to the senior people, sadhus, then that gives us this realization that I am not this man. But if one is doing service and still materially attached, then he says, then what is the value of this service? That means there is something wrong. So he says that if people like you, because he is referring to Prithu, of course Prithu was not really bewildered, but making Prithu as the object, he is giving instruction for people like us, that if people are bewildered, that means whatever spiritual practice they are doing is not bringing fruit. The fruit of the spiritual practice is to have this realization <coughs> that I am separate from the body and then as an outcome of that become free from envy, from jealousy, from hatred. Because this hatred is a very demoniac quality in the human mind. It will have some hatred for us, some is raga and vesha. And this is based on the bodily concept of life. When we identify with our own body, then we also consider other people as the body. And then naturally we fall into this duality. So duality springs from this identification. And this manifests through the mind. Because mind is always thinking in the terms of duality. This is the basic characteristic of the mind. Bhagavan Maya Mohana Deva Bhave Diti Chet Tatra Purusha. So, this is called Avidya in the Yoga Sutra. Here in the Purana, it is called Maya. It is the Maya of the Lord. So, Mama Maya Duratya Krishna says, My Maya. So, Maya is another word for Avidya. Avidya is actually one feature of Maya. And as long as we are identifying with the physical body, then we are under the influence of Maya. So we have to get out of that. Ataha kaya vimam vidvan avidya kam karm vihi arabdha iti naivasmin prati vidho anusajjate. He says that this body is a product of avidya, kaam and karma. At first there is ignorance in general. And because of ignorance there is desire. And when ignorance is there then we have material desires. And then because of material desires we engage in karma. So, avidya leads to desire, desire leads to material actions and then we are under the law of karma, so then we get into the cycle of birth and death. So, this is how it goes. But the root cause here is described as avidya, avidya kam karma. So, body is a product of avidya, ignorance about our true nature. And because of that, 
then as soon as we identify with the body then there are material desires so there is raga and dvesh so raga is liking and raga the roga right so all the diseases come from the raga according to astam here the famous book of ayurveda by vam bhatta so raga the roga raga and roga roga means disease raga is this material attachments basically desire to enjoy the senses so that leads and then when you have a desire to fulfill the desire you have to act so from that comes karma and when you act then two things happen either you get the result as you wanted or you don't get the result as per your desire if you get the result as you wanted then you suffer if you don't get the result as you wanted then you suffer <laughs> suffering comes both ways because yoga sutra says that sukhanusai raga right it gives the definition of raga sukhanusai raga that when you get something which you wanted you feel sukha you feel happy but that gives you raga attachment to it and by attachment you become conditioned and that will give you rage Then this word rage comes from the raga. Then you become occupied by that. You become completely allured. Raga means allurement, enticed. Your mind is thinking about it. That itself is a disturbance. Then you have no peace. As soon as you have raga, your peace is gone. so whether you get the result as you liked which means sukha then you will suffer or if you don't get it then you have dukha then you suffer so there are two ways to suffer one is suffering from the misery and one is suffering from the happiness so this is avidya kaam karna both are suffering therefore दुखमे विवेकिंग it's just another end of misery misery is like a stick one end is called misery other is called <laughs> happiness but the whole thing is misery on some of them one side looks favorable it's like favorable suffering and unfavorable suffering like when you eat chili so your mouth is burning but you like it <laughs> so it is a favorable burning of the mouth those people who like chili is their mouth burn they like it that's why they say i got kick out of it so usually somebody kicks you you don't like it but people do things to get kicks <laughs> So that means the kick also gives some happiness, right? So that is the material world. We get happiness by getting kicks. So therefore, say ataah kaya nimam. So in Sanskrit, the word for body is used kaya. It comes from the Sanskrit root kai. this means to cry 
So his body is always crying. Crying for something. So Kaya. Kaya Maya. So this Kaya is the manifestation of Maya. So Kaya Mimam Vidwan Avidya Kam Karma Bhi Aradhaya. He says it is product of all this Avidya Kam and Karma. So those, he says, those who are Prati Buddha. Buddha, you know, enlightened person. Someone who is enlightened, Buddha, na sajjata. They don't become attached to it. They don't give their life to it. So people are devoted to the body very much. You get up in the morning and you show your devotion to the body. The devotee gets up, he shows his devotion to God. He's thinking he has to do his puja, worship, chanting and mantra. But for materialistic people, the body is the deity. So they are very much worried about it, especially something about the neck. This few inches is very important. So much devotion for this. We spend so much time. The same that woman spends I don't know, like twenty percent of the life in front of the mirror. <laughs> there was one boy in the room with his father and there were flies. So his flies were disturbing. So he smashed them one by one, he killed all the five flies. And then he was telling to his father that out of these five, two were female and three males. So the father was very intrigued that how do you know that two were female and three males? So he asked that how do you know that two were female? He said these two were always going and sitting on the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> He was in female flies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aramdhaiti Naivasmin Prati Buddha Anu That an enlightened person, he is not attracted or attached to it. It's not that we don't take care of the body, it has to be taken care of because it is also a vehicle, this is also for us. And the path of bhakti is considered as the temple of Lord. But not considering there, we have a different idea. Means now we are seeing it as an instrument for service, not independently, object of enjoyment, an instrument to enjoy. So therefore he says that Bhagavan Maya Mohana Deva Bhavet. It's only when people are bewildered by the Maya of the Lord then it happens. Not otherwise. So this is the sign of Maya. More one is attached to the body, and more one is under the influence of Maya. There are different degrees of Maya. So some people are completely in the bodily concept of life. They cannot even think that there is something different. If you try to tell them, it doesn't make any sense. So this Charvak was also like that. You know, the story of Charvak in Mahabharata. This was the philosophy of the Charvak, that the body itself is the self. There is nothing beyond that. And therefore, if this is our self, then be happy with it. So this is the materialism, this is the essence of materialism, that I am this body. So all this program, the modern state governments, whatever laws, whatever welfare programs they do, it is only for the body. Every program they do, only for the body, because they don't know anything beyond that. And that's why there is no world peace, although there is so much wealth, so much facility now, so much food available, so many types of cloths, 
housing. But still people are not satisfied and not happy. That is because of this problem. But as long as you identify with the body, which is then you are under the influence of Maya. You cannot be happy. So you cannot fix these problems of the society if we work under the influence of this Abhidhi. Because those people who are leading, they themselves are blind. Andhayatha, Andhene, Niyaman. So blind is leading other blind people. So the leaders themselves are not, previously leaders were like Prithumarans. They were realized people. If not realized, at least they had knowledge. <coughs> they were guided by great personalities, saintly people. So they ruled under their guidance and therefore they were able to do proper welfare for the society. At present the leaders and their counsellors, they are all blind. So what welfare they can bring to the society? Not much. But they say like that. So then, some people like them, some don't like them. So he says, Asakshantaha sarire smil aminot padite grihe apatye dharvane vapi ke kuriyan nunta gudam. He says that an intelligent person, he remains detached from this. He does not mix with it. He says that this body, and then this body creates further things. House money, children, these are all products of the body. So he says that who is that intelligent person who will develop attachment for these things. If my body itself is not myself, then how can my house be myself? How can my money be myself? How can my wife be myself? How can my children be myself? Because they are all one step removed from the body. At least one step removed. So he says, Buddha, Ka Kuryan Mantamana. He says, he is asking a rhetorical question. Who is that intelligent person who will give up for who, who will have an attachment for this. So it's just like somebody has a car which is made in Germany, BMW. <laughs> so then he thinks he is a German. Somebody has a car made in America, Ford, and he thinks he is American. So what would you think of such a person? When he, he has a car made in Germany, he thinks of German, then he sold the car, he got an American car, now he thinks he's American. <laughs> what do you think of him? You think that he's crazy, right? Crazy or pretty shallow. Yeah. But we are all like that. <laughs> That's what we are. It's because I'm born in India, I'm Indian, you're born in America, you're American, it's the body. So we are identifying with the body and we are thinking. I'm very proud. This, I am driving BMW, I am BMW, but I am driving it. And you, you are just a Ford Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what he means, that Kekuryan Mamta Buddha, that a Buddha, a 
intelligent, enlightened person. How can he think like this? So you can see the stupidity of people in general now. Can you imagine a person like this if he comes here and he sees people? He will actually see like this only, like somebody is driving a car and he thinks I belong to this country because I am driving this car. Doctor, could you clarify when you were talking about when you're doing service with bodily attachment? Because I'm, I'm assuming, if I heard you correctly, you mentioned that there then isn't really any effect. And I'm wondering if there are also degrees of. We talked about the degrees of Maya. Is there degrees of bodily attachment that then affect, uh, have an effect on the outcome of your service? Based on how strong the bodily conception is? No, he, he was saying that if somebody is doing service to some saintly people, I, I don't know if your question is related with that. Yes. The point he was making is that how is it possible that somebody is doing service to the saintly people and still attached to the body? That was a rhetorical question again. It's what he means by that is that if you are doing service to saintly people, then you should not be attached to the body. Which goes both ways. That to do service, you have to become attached to your own body, otherwise you will not do the service. Because to do service, you have to actually care for the person who serves, like a nurse. They have to serve them, they cannot be worried all the time about their body. Even if they are hungry, they have to go and give the medicine. So you have to rise about your bodily concept, bodily attachment to do service, to do anything. On the other side, if you do service to saintly people, then this will happen to you. That you will rise about the bodily attachment. So he was, Lord was saying, in a way he was being sarcastic to Prithu. That how is that you were trying to have this pradha, this, what you call it, rivalry with Indra. You who have done service to some people, I think that's what he was saying. He was saying that these two things don't go together. But are, in order to have intellectual understanding that we're not our body and we can have that conception, but in order to have realization of the that. Is, is so we begin with the intellectual understanding. That is very important. And then we have to realize it. For that we do sadhana. That's why we do service, we do chanting, we do hearing. This is also practice. This hearing is also spiritual practice. Because by hearing only, you will become free from this. Satam prasannanu vire samadhi bhavanti hritkana rasayana katha tajyoshna dasu apor vivartani sraddhagat bhakti rani pranishyate Then we meet saintly people. Then there will be talks about media samvila, about the Lord's activities, Lord's pastimes, His qualities. And they are like the tonic for the heart. Heart has the disease of the raga. It's called Hridharoga. The disease of the heart is raga. Which is also called Kama. Which is the lust. So lust is the disease of the heart. And heart is pumping blood through the whole body. So, all the virus, all the bacteria, <coughs> heart is going everywhere into the body. Raga also means red. So, heart is having this roga of raga, red disease. 
because lust is also signified by the red color, passion. Raga means passion. So this passion is in the heart and the blood has the color of the passion. So blood is circulating this passion throughout the body. So the whole thing is diseased. When you hear Katha, when you hear these stories from the proper source, with proper explanation, then this disease is removed. And then one becomes fixed on the path of spirituality. Tajoshna Dasu Vartma means the path of the means the path of spirituality, path of love, path of devotion. So one then moves on that. And then you get Shraddha, Rati, Bhakti, and Kumasati. Gradually, one will attain the means. So that is the also meaning of Vidya Seva. Because when you do Seva, then also you get the opportunity to hear from them. Vritha means elderly, but here elderly is not just by the age. Elderly means elderly by knowledge, by experience. So by serving them, you get to know many things. By their behavior, by their talk, you know, suppose questions to them. So that's what cleans the heart. That's what was meant by. The key distinction is it's the grace of the senior person as opposed to our own endeavor that's making that purification occur. Yes. So we make an endeavor, but ultimately it happens by grace. But what we can do is our endeavor, at least in the path of bhakti. Nothing happens without grace. Grace is a very important factor here. In Yoga Sutra also it is there, all the Patanjali has not directly spoken of it, but this whole idea of this for Pranidhana is to inform that. So in Bhakti Mark it is very clearly stated. Again, again it is said, Krita, Sabasana. So grace is very important. And grace comes by the race. So you race, then you have grace. So we make the effort and assiduously we tolerate, we remain fixed because mind will tell you not to do that. Mind wants convenience, that is the meaning of Prag looks for convenient position, convenient association, convenient condition. But in this material world there is no convenience. It's somehow designed like that. That there is not much convenience in this material world. So you know this so that we get out of this body becomes. As long as we, atta we are attached to body, there will always be some inconvenience, no matter what you are, and how much you have, no matter. Because this body itself is inconvenience. If you don't understand this, then it will always create inconvenience. If we add as long, as much we identify with it, that much inconvenience we will get from it. And as much as we become free from the attachment, then we will not feel so much inconvenience. Because feeling of inconvenience also depends on attachment. Those who are not too much attached to body, they don't feel too much inconvenient. They don't become disturbed easily. Those who are attached, they become disturbed with very small things. Uh, 
um, would you say we should uh, we should have just enough attachment to keep us from roga? Yeah, that of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, people who completely deny their body often yeah, end that up is having... not good. Yeah. Attachment again, I'm you know, do not misunderstand. Attachment one is independent of the process or of the goal. One is remaining in this idea of being independent. An attachment with this understanding, then we have to take care of it. And that attachment is not for the sake of enjoying the body. Otherwise, you know, people also come to spiritual life because they want some mental benefit. They also go to yoga so that they have good health and then they can enjoy. Which is just the opposite of the purpose of yoga. So the purpose is yes, we have to take care of the health because without health nothing much can be achieved. Dharma Thaka Mokshana Varogyam Nivam Thaka Yoga Thasya Bhartara Sreyasa Jeeva Thasya Chak So whatever you want in your life, you want money, you want environment, you want moksha, liberation, it's based on good health, disease-free body. And health is destroyed by disease, roga. And disease also takes away everything. In the very life. So taking care of health is also part of sadhana. Take it as a part of the spiritual practice. Because now taking care of health is not for any material purpose. It's for spiritual purpose. So that's why when we eat, this eating is also a service. In Hindi or in Sanskrit, it is called seva. We call it prasad seva. Literally means service to the prasad food. We don't say eating. In English we say let's eat. But in Hindi we will say prasad seva karo. And seva means service. So everything is a service. The fact that this was a sarcastic question, that how could you be around a saintly person and still have a bodily conception? But grace is not dependent on anything, and this point is clearly established. But let's say someone is, is around a saintly person for many, many years and is maybe sincere of heart, um, <coughs> but for whatever reason isn't able... Is it possible that one isn't able to receive the grace? It, I know that... The grace isn't dependent on any any one thing um, because it's independent. But someone could it's possible that someone could be around a saintly person for many, many years and for whatever reason not able to overcome the bodily conception, which maybe isn't <coughs> a, a lack of strength in the grace, but a, a problem with the receptivity of it? Yeah, that is possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, that can happen. And that something is blocking either from the past life or this life. And that's possible. But mm -hmm. that service will only anyway have influence on our life. It will not be missed. If it is done with sincerity, it will not go missed. May have influence after some time. So sometimes things take time. Also, sometimes God may restrain the effect. He has his own reasons that so that unscrupulous people do not take to the path. And they say, Look, this guy is doing service for so many years. What has he gained? Nothing. It's useless. Those people who don't have faith, then they will not take to it. So that is also possible. There can be different reasons. Having faith also comes from mercy of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Having faith also comes from the mercy of the Lord. Yeah. So it's like I'm really not doing anything independently. 
because our whole system is that nothing is independent. There is only one person who is independent and that is God. If anything else is happening independently then means that thing is out of the God's jurisdiction. But our basic concept, basic principle of our philosophy or theology is that God is the supreme controller, Ishwara, Paramatrishna. So being supreme controller, nothing is independent in the ultimate sense. There may be limited independence, but ultimately nothing is out of His control. So this is the basic concept. So, so in this sense we can understand even our endeavoring on the spiritual path as being God's grace, even our endeavor. Yeah, ultimately, without God's grace, you cannot do spiritual endeavor also. So therefore we should not become proud. So this, if we remember this, then we don't become proud. Otherwise, we become, we have a tendency, the human mind has a tendency to become proud very easily. Even about good things and also bad things. So we lose spiritual practice and we become proud. I am doing better than you. Okay, if you are doing better, that is very good. That's for your credit. Don't become proud. So this pride has to be kept. Even if you are advancing more than others, don't become proud. Because that will again become the cause of all. And if we are becoming proud, that means we have not made advancement. So would you say that selflessness is the answer to it? Yes. Like an absolute selflessness. About this Raghav Yoga, okay. Since that uh, the disease are coming because of the desires, Yes. Since desires are based, the wrong desires in the sense that they are meant for the, they are only in the realm of this senses, then... Uh, yeah, because when we have wrong desires, <coughs> then we become controlled by them and we act wrongly. And acting wrongly means doing something which is in the imbalance mm -hmm. in your system, body or mind. You may eat more than what you need, you may eat the wrong food. Or you may behave wrongly, causing distress to somebody, and that will bring disturbance to your mind. Mm -hmm. and that will bring disease and mm -hmm. so, Let's say that then the, the, the end of the sacralized person should be that he knows all about anything wrong, something like that. Mm. But again, it depends on the end. Somebody becomes self-realized, they also may become neglectful of theirs. Sometimes the people are so self-realized body that they just don't want to take care of them. They are avdhutas. So they just don't bother. Yeah, well, there, there are some practices where some of the so-called saintly people actually you know, practice the sort of self-punishment in the form of detaching from the body and you know, in, in the form of uniting you know, to achieve the union with a, with a, with a Lord. So. I mean, that is not prescribed. That is a process. We are, I'm talking about one who is self-realized, he may neglect his body. I'm not talking about the process. Beating the body is not going to be self-realized. 